guys, Shanda Sumter here. I'm excited to have you. I'm actually going to uh, be streaming live on Instagram as well this morning. Uh, hey guys over Instagram so you guys can see me bouncing back and forth. I just want to let you know that on Hardcore Business Facebook, um, Facebook forward slash, uh, Facebook.com forward slash Hardcore Business, I stream live Monday through Friday and we do coffee with Shanda. So here's my coffee in my little Hardcore Business cup that says, You've got this. So here's the truth, you guys. I want to talk to you. Hey, Crystal, how are you, girl? Hi, Susanna, how are you? Julie, how are you? So here's what's crazy. I literally was up all night. I was up all night. Has Have any of you guys been up all night? I know you have. If you're running a business, you've been up before all night. So those of you guys who are joining me on Instagram, I just want to let you know that um, on Hardcore Business, uh, on the Hardcore Business page on, on Facebook is where I stream live and have coffee at 6 a.m. But I thought I'd join you guys today for a couple reasons. On June 5th, I will be doing an Instagram challenge only on Instagram. And I'll be giving away $500 cash for people playing the challenge, whoever wins the challenge, just to help you build your business. And it's perfect in the theme of the conversation I want to have this morning, which is about the topic worry versus winning worry versus winning. So it's crazy because all night I was up, which is what I started to tell you. And at about three o'clock in the morning, I was like, oh my God, like I have to get up in a few hours to do coffee with Shanda. And so here's what's cool. This week I have something called a focus production week, which means that all week I have no appointments. All I have is a week of just pure production which means that all I do is I just focus on content creation, I focus on um, you know, recording webinars, creating webinars, doing videos for YouTube, things like that, um, creating content. We have a mastermind coming up in July for my marketing mastery clients, so um, this week I have a couple days designated to actually creating sales content, meaning teaching them how to convert more in that mastermind, and so what's cool is because I have these focus production weeks, even when I have moments of, let's say, worrying versus winning, because you know I wasn't up all night long because I was like sitting here going, mm, I just have a restful night's sleep. I was actually worrying. And I was worrying about all of these things that I had on my mind, even though I had a production week going on, I had all these ideas floating through my head and wondering if they were getting done. And don't get me wrong, I have an incredible staff of people who work here at Hardcore Business, but still, I'm human. You know, I once heard Tony Robbins not too long ago talk about um, some of the stuff he does for internal peace, and that, you know, no matter who you are, you have these thoughts of worrying if you're ambitious, like you're trying to get to the next level, you're trying to make sure that you're serving at a high level, or you just have an aggressive schedule right now, and maybe you have a lot of things to get done with this aggressive schedule, or even better, you're going on a vacation, and you know that week before you go on a vacation, you get a million things done that week. You know, some of us are facing different reasons why we possibly could be worrying. So know that my worrying was from a good place. I just had a lot of things that I want to accomplish from a place of inspiration, aspiration. And so that's why I was up until three o'clock in the morning studying, or not studying, but actually uh, working. So two hours sleep, but here's what's cool. When do you know you should push through versus possibly create a strategy to rest? So today I do have a strategy to rest for a couple hours where I'm going to, have, I'm going to take a two hour nap this afternoon, but that's because I've actually created a production week with no appointments and no schedules. Okay, so I wanna share something with you. You're going to win if you don't feel guilty about making money. You're going to win no matter whether or not you have a little bit of worry in your space or not if you don't feel guilty about making money. So the other day, just literally five days ago, I'm in the, uh, I'm in the, the, the lineup to go, and, uh, to go and get my car washed and there's this guy who was on his way to work and he, um, he had forgotten his cash to be able to get any gas. And I, I, this guy went from person to person to person 
try like knocking on windows so god bless his level of courage and humility to go knock on windows and he asked people if they would be willing to give him gas money and everybody said no and when he got to my window of course i unrolled the window and he told me the story everybody keeps saying no to me and he goes but i literally forgot my wallet and i just need to get gas would you be willing to help me and first and foremost i always carry some cash with me because of the fact that I ha I'm a mom and what if my card doesn't work and I've got my son in the car or I'm out and about and I just need cash for something. I, I learned that traveling to third world countries, I learned that just traveling um, and now being a mom I feel like it would be irresponsible for me not to have some cash on me. Just my belief system, doesn't have to be yours. And so I did, I cashed me and so I grabbed 10 bucks and I gave him 10 bucks. And once I did that, it was interesting because you know, a few minutes later, I had this feeling of worthiness, right? Generosity creates this level of worthiness. So have you ever tried to make an offer, like whether it's through webinars or videos, or if you're doing Facebook Lives like this, I'm not going to make you an offer. But if I was going to make you an offer, I wouldn't feel guilty about making an offer because I feel good about who I am. Generosity leads to a guiltless mind. Now, there's a difference between generosity and martyr. So martyr is when you give and give and give, and then you blame the people in your life for not giving back to you. That's martyr. That's giving with some sort of an attachment to get. If you, if you are a martyr, then you're actually going to have a harder time making offers because a part of you will feel guilty for making those offers, right? So when I first started tithing, I remember I read something in the Bible that said that, uh, test me, the only piece in the Bible that says test God, right? Test me for six months and tithe faithfully and I will show you a return on your investment. I will give, I will reap a huge harvest for you. And so I don't know why that just stuck in my head and I tithed for six months. Well, I saw little pieces of return on my investment right away because of the mindset that you have to have to give. So forget even the fact that it's tithing, forget even the fact that it's connected to God, just forget all of that. Because what I'm talking about right now has nothing to do with religion, it has to do with mindset. When you can be the type of person who gives and you're generous, like one of the things we tell our clients all the time in our Facebook groups, whenever they come and share me, share with me, because they do a lot, oh my God, I just made 5,000 in a day, or oh my God, I just, you know, I just saw this morning in one in our marketing mastery group that somebody um, had sold 23 people in her group, um, and she's a fairly new business owner. Um, but then you have people who have been struggling for many, many years, but they think they're actually generous people. And the truth is, is that if you actually just analyze the way you, you are being, if you have any sort of thoughts of hoarding or not enough, you're cutting back on things to be able to fit into limitations, then you actually are operating from a state of lack. And you cannot trick the world. You cannot trick your belief system. You cannot trick God. You cannot trick anything. But let's just use your belief system. You can't trick yourself because you know who you're being on a regular basis. So if you want to explode your business, if you want to win on a regular basis, you won't win all the time because you have to fail in order to win. However, if you feel weird, strange about making offers, it's actually coming back to a way that you're being on a regular basis. So if you give, you tithe, you people walk up to you and they ask you for something and you can actually get outside yourself and give. And by the way, it's never convenient. So you can change worry versus winning to comfort versus calling. I know that I never have to worry about making offers because of who I am behind closed doors to people that I meet on the street. I know that if I have a client that you know beats me up on the fact that in fact I just had a client an old client um, you know maybe three weeks ago send me this email that was super super long and she was just she was actually condemning me 
because I believe in God and, and read the Bible. And I, and I did IVF, two rounds of IVF, and I was sharing my story. And she was condemning me for it. And my first reaction was to get defensive. But as quickly as I got defensive, I disarmed that defensiveness because I know who I am. Okay, now this isn't about me. This is about me giving you something this morning. And if you're getting this, just hit some hearts on Facebook, you know, say, you know, tag a friend on Instagram, whatever, share this message with people. Because what I'm trying to get across to you is something that will absolutely transform your energy level. You get two hours of sleep and still be energetic and vital. You can make offers and not feel weird because of who you're being because the only thing that makes offers stick, businesses really grow past ceilings because many people get stuck at about a million dollars. Um, many people get stuck under a hundred thousand dollars. It's an element of mindset of generosity, right? It's, it's a mindset of generosity which is not generosity every now and then, it's actually whenever you are called to step up, you step up and you give, and most of the time, it's never comfortable. You see, the people in the car wash line that didn't give probably had a bank card on them that could have walked into the gas station and pulled out five, 10 bucks or 20 bucks for the guy who needed gas because he forgot his wallet you know, when when he left the house in the morning, they could have gotten in. They could have inconvenienced themselves to give to that person. You know, there was once my nanny came home and said, "There's a woman with a baby strapped to her and a toddler on the corner, about ten minutes away from my house." And she said she had a sign that she was hungry and needed help. Well, we got back in my car. I literally had 20 minutes before I was leaving a training. I got back in my car and I drove with my nanny. I said, you show me where she, where she is. I withdrew money on the way and I gave her 500 bucks. And I didn't give it to her. I gave it to my nanny and I said, the only thing you must do when you give this to her is empower her that this is a blessing from God. And this is not about me being religious, but this is a blessing from God, not from you. And they sat on the corner and they prayed together. And my nanny doesn't read the Bible. She doesn't go to church. They sat on the corner and they prayed together. And I sat in the car and I cried watching this moment. And she told my nanny she was going to go out and she was going to look for a job. Why am I sharing this with you? Because who you are on a regular basis will determine whether or not you can make offers and they stick. And if you are this person and you're making offers and you still find that you feel nervous about it. I'm gonna tell you because you're not getting, you're not connecting, or you're not actually journaling about how good of a person you are. You gotta fill yourself up to be able to be a major leader in the community so that when people send you hate mail, that you can actually not be defensive about it and be able to say, you know what, I know who I am and I don't need your approval to make a difference in the world because the minute you start making a difference and create traction, what happens is you get an army of people who love you and then you get an army of people who can't stand you or your message and completely think you're full of it. So what if, what if you were, start to, you were to start to connect your level of generosity with breaking the scarcity that holds the money flow back from your life? So I'm going to take a couple moments and I'm going to hot seat some people and share with me inside your business, right? Because what I teach is business, right? A lot of people ask me about my relationship. I'm happy to answer questions about how I created an extraordinary relationship, but it's the same way that I created an extraordinary uh, business, right? The lack of ability to scale a business is the same lack of ability to scale a relationship. It's the same. It's a willingness to commit to go all the way. It's a willingness to let go of having to be right. It's also a commitment to an end mission and you don't care how you get there, but you're committed to getting there no matter what. There's no back door out. There's no back door out. It's failing forward on a daily basis and it's operating from a place of overflow and generosity, even when you have no evidence it's going to work. And what happens is those people win because they never look for a way out. You can't quit 
anything in your life. I don't care if it's a coaching program. I don't care if it's a marathon. I don't care. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's a marriage. You got to stop quitting things, you guys, in order to succeed. You have to become what Iron Man called the race. The Iron Man calls finishers. And finishers finish and they win. Now, I'm, I'm not condemning you if you've quit in the past. I've quit in the past. I stopped quitting about five years ago. And when I stopped quitting, I started to make half a million dollars, a million dollars, multiple millions of dollars. I stopped going through relationships. I stopped carrying extra weight. So I want to share with you, or I want to hot seat you, What's the number one thing you're facing in your business? Be bold, be honest, be vulnerable. Let me help you today. And know that if you're just tuning in to uh, 6 a.m. Coffee with Shanda, if you're on Instagram, you guys, the reason you're not used to me doing this, but the reason why I'm looking over here is because I have my phone here and I'm streaming live on Instagram this morning. Um, you guys on Instagram, just know that Monday through Friday, I do a Facebook Live um, where it's called Coffee with Shanda. This morning I'm drinking a macchino latte with a little bit of mac macadamia nut um, milk and some agave in here and it's super good. Uh, and we love to hear what you're drinking, okay? But you can always find us on facebook.com forward slash hardcore business. All right, so hi Crystal, this is amazing, no back door, yes. And Crystal, you have been rocking it lately, right? You've been rocking it. I gave you a stretch to go and actually sell an intensive what, what you guys should know about Crystal Jackson is if you have a child that you want to become a pro athlete or, and this is another moment of generosity, right? It's about giving. It's about giving. It's about giving. If you have a child that you want to become a pro athlete, talk to Crystal Jackson. Find her on the Facebook thread. She has incredible athletes who go off to get schol uh, uh, university scholarships and they become pro athletes and they don't get injured in the process, where a lot of them do get injured in the process. She's amazing to talk to. But Crystal, we gave you a stretch to go and make a difference for the, for the kids and to literally start selling intensives where you work with people in intensives, boot camps for a day for incredible amounts of money, like $4,000 or $3,000 for a day. And within 48 hours, I believe you went and sold one. You know, that's the kind of shit that happens when you start operating from a place of leadership and empowerment and get, and get that you matter. And you don't get that you matter if you don't operate from a place of generosity. You just don't, right? Because you know that you're being greedy or stingy at some point and living in a comfort zone, which is convenient, which doesn't create overflow, right? Leaders create overflow. They're available even when they're not available. They find a way. They always find a way. This is why you have to stop quitting. Okay, so, um, Okay, let's do some questions. Um, okay, Su Susanna, my weakness is my weakness is that I do I do quit. Yeah, I mean I get it. I'm not proud of it. I'm not proud of it, and I don't feel worthy. And sometimes I quit. This hold on, I'm losing you. The thread's going for it so quick. Uh, is this something that coaching will help me with? So Susanna, yes, a good coach, whether it's me or another great coach that, that you resonate with. You gotta find a coach that will kick your ass and not sell out on you. So first and foremost, I'm never afraid of losing a client. I'm never afraid of losing a client. I'm always gonna coach into their ways of being to be able to, for instance, because I help people scale businesses, I help people create reoccurring income, I, that's me. Whether you wanna start a side business or you wanna start a full-time company. That's what I do for a living and that's what I'm really good at. There are a million business coaches out there. There are a million good business coaches out there, really good business coaches out there. There's Fabienne, there's Suzanne Evans. There's a lot of really good coaches out there. However, you have to find a coach that you trust, you like their lifestyle, and will absolutely help you become a finisher, right? And so, yes, I, I have coaches. Um, I used to have a parenting coach. Um, I have a fitness coach. In fact, I'm right now being coached by a billionaire on how to actually get more fit. Is that not crazy? Because the whole game is mental, you guys. A big piece of the game is mental once you know how to run the plan. Don't get me wrong, the plan keeps to evolve in strategy. 
However, mindset is a big piece. If you're emotionally triggered or you don't finish what you start, then you need a really good coach. Okay, so Lisa, um, I'm, willing, I'm willing to put it out there. Week one of making eye solves, I closed three. Okay, so what you guys know don't know if you don't work with me, eye solves is my sales conversation. It's a five-step sales conversation. Anybody can do it. In about 10 to 20 minutes, you can actually have a conversation with someone who does not know you, and you can close $10,000, $20,000, $30,000 packages or offers to completely cold people who don't know you at all. Uh, we actually sell that process on my Hardcore Business page for $97. So that's what Lisa's talking about right now. So in week one, she was she was doing eye solves. She closed three. Two weeks later, I did the $97 offer at the end of my webinar and only closed three. Scared that three is my ceiling. Uh, Lisa, don't, so manage your mind, Lisa. Okay, so first of all, if you made an offer off a webinar and you sold three, whether it's a, a low-priced offer or a $1,000 offer, the point is, is that most of your sales are always going to come in the follow-up. So Lisa, are you following up with people? I think sometimes it's, um, sometimes it's a blessing and a curse if you're a good salesperson and you can close right away when you make an offer because often you never develop the muscle of follow-up, right? So to give you an idea, if I make an offer on a webinar and say I sell 20 units, right? Or let's just say I use yours. I sell three units of anything. Then I should be at least doubling that number off my follow-up series. So whether it's sales conversations, whether it's webinars, whether it's video presentations, if you're making offers, then you want to make sure you have a strong follow-up series, whether it's copy that's written or whether or not something that I love to do is I actually love to put my prospects up on the wall on one of those big wall size post-its and I'll put their name and I'll put what their excuse was and what I believe is possible for that person. As long as they're up on a board that I can see on a regular basis, you don't need millions of people to talk to. What you actually need to do is become a really strong finisher again, which means that follow-up is what creates a strong finish, okay? So I hope that helps, Lisa. So don't let that get in your mind. What you're not recognizing is most of it's in the follow-up, and I don't think you're, you're, you have a strong follow-up series, or you're, you're putting too much strength on the front end and not enough on the back end. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, looking for questions. There's so many great comments. Love it. Um, Crystal Jackson, if you need a good uh, tutor for your students, let me know. I have a great friend. Awesome, Tiffany. Um, okay. Let's see. There's so many great comments. I love it. Over 100 comments already on, on Hardcore Business Facebook page. Awesome. You guys are active this morning. Great. So, Shan, I keep feeling who cares and who will really read my newsletter. Um, there are already too many emails that my audience is receiving. Totally. Just this thought blocks me from sending newsletters and getting in touch with my audience. How, how do I change this? So what Darla's saying on Facebook right now is one of the things that we teach inside of HeartCore is to build really robust, engaged email lists. However, let's be honest, all of us are completely inundated by emails, 110%. However, we open the emails that have subject lines that serve our values, right? That serve our values. So Darla, what you need to do is become more valuable. I was literally, one of the reasons why I was up this morning is I was thinking about, uh, like I was thinking about a client that um, is starting to fail. And she's starting to fail because of her mindset. She rocket shipped out of a group called Pace Club. She was rocking it. And now she's starting to revert back to some really powerfully strong limiting thoughts. And she's getting righteous in what she thinks she needs and believes. And so what's happening is she's about to make some bad decisions by retracting and looking outside the plan, looking for other things to be able to succeed. 
sorry, there's a fly. Easily, ADD, easily distracted. Um, and I was thinking about it this morning, and I thought to myself, a subject line. And of course, I can't remember the subject line now because it was two o'clock in the morning at that point, and I was still in bed uh, thinking about things, or actually one o'clock in the morning, I was still in bed thinking about things because at two and 2.30, I was actually up working. Um, I was thinking about her, for instance, Oh, it was like something like uh, how smart women fail or how smart women sabotage themselves, right? Super smart, smart woman. She would consider herself smart now because we helped her become successful, make six figures in less than a year. But now this smart woman is about to be too smart for her own business strategy and quite frankly, her, me, her coach who can get her to the next level. She's about to screw up her strategy by going back into the belief system and the mindset that actually had her be broke in the first place. And so I thought to myself, and Darla, I give this to you, you need to think about, you need to think about first of all, what your limiting beliefs are and what your client's limiting beliefs are, and you need to get valuable. So I think that's valuable because I think smart women and smart men make really stupid decisions. And they're stupid decisions not because they're stupid and the email would be never condemning them because that's not who I am, right? Even though sometimes somebody could hear a comment like that is condemning, I would do everything I can to land it and take the guilt off them because I don't think guilt has somebody grow. But I would try and hook them with the fact that a stupid decision is your past that had you be broke in the first place and for you to trust the process because you don't know how to get to where you want to go. If you did, you'd already be there. And so this is part of trusting a coach and trusting your coach even when you don't believe something's going to work. So Darla, you have to manage your mind, honey. Know that over $60 billion in, email, in sales happens in email marketing. In fact, there's a site called revolve.com revolve.com emails me every single day every single day so does free people they email me pretty free people almost every day if not every day they email me their clothing line with cool subject lines like the perfect summer dress like the best bikini for the best coverage or which would you know I'm not 20 anymore so I don't want to wear a g-string bikini Right, And so they're looking for their audience and they're solving problems for them that has me on their email and buying. And let me tell you, I buy from Revolve at least twice a, twice a month, right? And so my point is, is that Darla, it doesn't matter if everybody's inundated by email. In fact, everybody has to manage their mind around that because we buy off email all the time. Right, so Darla, I recommend that you actually get on an email marketing like um, Revolve.com or Free People and allow yourself to get sold. Allow yourself to get sold and start to break the mindset and start to create a swipe file. In, in my Gmail, I have a copy swipe file and every time a company like Revolve.com or Free People actually sells me, I keep that copy and even though I sell business coaching, I learn from retailers how to sell better. I keep that copy and then when I go to create, let's say, a sales something, I pull out that copy and maybe I have my graphic designer create an infographic like that. I swipe their headline, maybe the perfect, you know, summer dress to the perfect, the perfect summer cash injection right and I use their infographic and their headlines as a way to inspire a piece of marketing material that works so Darla I get that we're all in a day by email marketing but what you need to do is stop worrying so that you can start winning and the way that you do that is put your focus on where you're going prove to yourself or collect data and evidence that it will work. And really what's happening is not that you're worried about them being inundated by email, that's the excuse you're giving yourself in order to avoid actually 
getting rejections or sending out emails and nothing happening. Or you're avoiding the work, honey. The work that it takes to actually become a great copywriter. Okay, um, Karen, I find, it, I find it a challenge to keep up with some of the terms. Lots of laughs. I solve strategy, masterminds, etc. Is there a glossary? I know, Karen. Um, okay, so uh, I'm happy to help you with some of these. So I solve just as our is our train our our sales model, our sales conversation. Easiest way to make money on the planet is to have a conversation with someone face to face. So on HardcoreBusiness.com, we sell it for ninety seven dollars. That's just my sales strategy. Masterminds like the book Thinking Grow Rich, they talk about it's so important to be inundated by people who win, right? So, for instance, um, one of our clients that I was talking about earlier that I know is a brand new business owner. She sold 23 people in her program. She did a video for our Marketing Mastery Group, and one of the things that she was sharing is how Tracy Campoli and, you know, different people in the group have been putting videos about what was working inside their business and how listening to them actually broke her mindset open to start to become more active, break a stuck moment in her business so she could explode and have eight sales in one week, right? And so, you know, a mastermind is a place for people and business owners, this is why people should never miss masterminds, is for them to come together and study together and connect because connection creates currency. Definitely tell you the people who don't come to consistent masterminds typically have a harder time succeeding. Okay, so, and I'm just going to go ahead and I think I'm going to take one more and then I'm going to call it a day and know that tomorrow morning I will be on Hardcore Business Facebook page doing Coffee with Shanda and tomorrow morning I will find something to give away for free of mine and send it to you, okay? So, let me see. Okay, I'm looking for a question and answer. Uh, good morning, you guys. Good morning, Margo. Sloan! Natasha! Okay, Shivani, how to prioritize. Um, Shivani, that's a great question on how to, how to prioritize. So, um, here's how I can answer that. At different times in my life, my son is a priority. Somebody's gonna give me shit for this, right? My son is not always a priority, right? Meaning that he's not always number one priority. I know somebody's gonna give me shit for this, but hear me out on this. I can, I can give my son a quality of life and a present connected mommy that I get to spend time with him every day I get to end work at 2.45 every day. He's out of work at 3. I get to pick him up from school, drive him to school, and still run a multi-million dollar company growing into eight figures. Because my son is not a priority seven days a week. My son is a priority on the weekends. My son is a priority when I take flex time, which is time off. Um, this quarter, I have 33 Flex days out of the quarter, which is time off. The other days I'm working. There are 14 or 15 days this quarter that are non-negotiable. The number one priority is my business. And those days are not, my son is not the priority and neither is my husband. But when I have flex time, they are my priority over anything. And it doesn't matter what happens in my business. There could be a complete crisis happening. And that will not take priority over my family. And so when people ask me what do I prioritize, it's the number one most important thing that's pressing and needs my attention now. Now that's different be between reacting. I don't operate in a reactional mode inside my business. In fact, when my clients reach out to me for last minute coaching and it becomes a routine, then I know they're not getting in front of their business strategy and they're running their business back ass backwards, which means they're being reactionary, they're being emotionally triggered, they're being stressed, they're being in fear, versus being ahead of the business plan, right? So this week, it's about production inside my company, and so this week my priority is in producing material for the Zone event, for my client's mastermind, 
to make sure that I'm an A in my client's world in what they expect from me. However, in the evening, I will be shifting to a priority of my, of my son and my husband. So what I will tell you is that every year, I have really three major nuggets that I want to accomplish in a year, just three. Every week, I have three tasks that I want to accomplish, just three. Anything under one specific task that I want to create in a week, I actually know I'm off purpose and I'm floundering. So if you've got a to-do list that's like this, I'm telling you, you are suffering. You are suffering. You're not being clear enough about what you're prioritizing. And I guarantee you that if I looked at your generosity level, it's low because you're spinning in too many things to do. And when we're spinning in too many things to do and stretch too thin, we stop being generous. When you stop being generous, you start to feel guilty when you make offers. And so you got to operate congruently as a leader so that you can make offers and they don't feel guilty and you know you're worthy and that people will buy because what you're giving is completely from a place of complete generosity because that's who you are. Not the actual offer, but who you are, right? And then secondly, you're not spread too thin so that you don't have enough time to practice, be intimate. I mean, generosity is in the same energy as abundance. And so when you have too many priorities on the plate, it's impossible for you to be generous. So when Zach's old enough, and I, I do explain it to him at two, but when Zach's old enough, he will actually create goals with me. And, and if he helps me get my goals and I help him get his goals, there'll be a prize that he and I will get to choose together, an ash, so that we reward ourselves from working hard. Because the one thing I think is a problem with today's society is people are entitled. I see it in clients who feel entitled to things. They don't succeed. Kids are entitled, right? We are entitled as adults. Uh, and I, I went to volunteer in Africa a few years ago and I realized how deep entitlement went even in me when I didn't realize that I was entitled because I had to work my ass off for everything I got in life. But entitlement slips in. It's whenever someone doesn't meet your expectations and you get bitchy. That's entitlement, my friends. And when entitlement is in your dialogue or in your way of being, you will always be left disappointed and you will be always have a level of scarcity in your life. You've got to get entitlement out. That's how you become accepting. That's how you become flexible. That's how you become generous. And generosity is directly connected to abundance. It's the same energy. They're friends. They hang out together. And so if you have too many priorities, you are not in the energy of abundance or generosity because you simply can't be. And so if there's anything that I can impart to you is focus your mind on being generous with your offers, with your time. And then that requires you to have to make some decisions on maybe stretching out some of your priorities so that they take longer to accomplish, meaning that Maybe some of the priorities on your to-do list today should be three months down the road. And you have to be willing to not have to be entitled to have that right now and be okay with having it three months later. Because if you're not, the chances of you actually accomplishing all of those things is slim because you will feel the pressure of stress and that will suck every ounce of abundance out of your life. And you wanna talk quality time? Well, quality time won't be available for you or for your babies, or for the people that you love. Okay, so I'll end on that note. All right, you guys, please let me know your takeaways. Uh, tag somebody that should hear this message. And you guys on Instagram know that June 5th, I'm gonna do an Instagram challenge on my Shanda Sumter page, which is the page you're watching on right now. And I will give away $500 in hopes to help you invest in your business, or go to Bloomingdale's and buy something nice for yourself and treat yourself. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Talk soon. Bye. See you tomorrow at 6 a.m.